Hello, and welcome to Pitchstone Health's introductory video. Over the next several minutes, I'm going to show you how Pitchstone Health can help make you more accurate and more efficient with your medical coding. Let's go ahead and get started. Pitchstone Health is completely online, so there's nothing to install. And because there's nothing to install, you can be assured that our data is always up to date and always accurate. To begin using Pitchstone Health, simply go to www.pitchstonehealth.com click on the login link and enter your username and password. And click login. Pitchstone Health is broken out into two main feature sets. First, we have a robust research engine accessed by the search link in the top menu. This is the first page you see after you log in. Next, we have an extensive code validation engine accessed by clicking on the check link. Let's get started with our research engine. The first thing you'll notice is our single, all-encompassing search box. You'll gain efficiencies by being able to search any combination of libraries and databases in a single search. The options you see below that are checked by default can be set in your user preferences. The simplest form of searching is by code. It's as easy as typing in the code and clicking search. Our system will automatically recognize your code and take you to what we call the code details page. Now, just because it was simple doesn't mean it's simplistic. What we've done behind the scenes is not only look up your code, but also cross-reference that code to a vast amount of additional information. Our philosophy is that the more work we can do on your behalf, the less likely you are to miss a vital piece of information, and that will make you more accurate. The Code Details page was designed after interviewing hundreds of coders, billers, and providers and asking them what was most important to them. The most important and commonly accessed information was placed on this first tab. Here, because we are on a CPT code, we have the CPT guidelines, this code's lay descriptions, the medically unlikely edits, the RVU table, which includes all of the components as well as the calculated dollar amounts, and the payment indicators. Throughout the application you can hover over links such as these to get additional information. Additional information can be found by clicking on the appropriate links along the menu here. If the link is in blue then there is additional information available for you. If the link is in gray then there is no further information. For example, Clicking on this LCD link will show you the local coverage determination, here we've parsed out the applicable ICD-9 codes from the policy for quick reference. You can easily change your location using this drop down box. You can also set the default location shown here in your user preferences. We also link you directly to the policy at CMS to further assist you in your research. Going back to the top, we can see there is no national coverage determination. It does, however, have CCI edits that we can access with this link. Here we've got all of the column 1 and column 2 edits listed. We have cross-reference information available here, including common modifiers and common ICD-9 diagnosis codes for this given CPT code. What we refer to as the taxonomy shows where this code falls within the greater code set. The Modifiers tab 
shows you common modifiers based on the previous year's Medicare billing statistics. So you can see what modifiers were submitted the most often with this code and the associated acceptance rate. This can be very valuable in jumpstarting your research. NDC information if available. Dictionary integration through Stedman's Medical Dictionary. The AMA CBT Assistant integration. and the history of the code. Now, going back to that dictionary integration, another way to take advantage of the Stedmans and our other reference material is to just type in your term. Select the dictionary checkbox and click search. Here we have the Stedman's entry, an entry from Wikipedia, and since we typed in the word hypertension, we also give you a link directly to the entire hypertension table. Now let's take a look at what happens when we do that same kind of word search but include a code set this time. We'll select the ICD-9 checkbox, and since we're all trying to learn ICD-10, we'll check that box as well. And click Search. We have the reference results just like before. But now we also have the ICD-9 results. and the ICD-10 results. Let's expand the ICD-9 results and take a closer look. The most important thing to notice is that the codes are not in numerical order. This is because we've run these results through our proprietary ranking algorithm and ordered them based on best match. Again, we are making you more efficient and more accurate by getting you to the more appropriate code faster. Clicking on a code takes you directly to that code's details page. This is very similar to the CPT code details page we saw earlier, but this time it's tailored for our ICD-9 code. Again, this first page you see was designed after talking with coders, billers, and providers and asking them what was the most important information for them to immediately see. In this case, it's the clarifying terms, includes, excludes, and what we call the taxonomy, which is where the code falls within the code set. You can see by this link here that there are entries in the hypertension table for this code. And clicking on the hypertension table link takes you to the entire hypertension table. Here we have the local coverage determinations. We have cross-reference information available. HCC data. Reference material including Stedman's Medical Dictionary and Wikipedia. And the history of the code. That concludes our demo of our research engine. Now let's take a look at code validation. Remember, it's accessed by our check link. Using this form, you can enter in any combination of CPTs, HCPCs, modifiers, and ICD-9s, and we run them through our extensive validation engine. The best way to demonstrate the power of this engine is through example. We can use it just simply as a CCI checker by entering CPT and HCPCs. and click check. 
Here you can see that our results are color coded for easy identification. Everything looks good until we get to this entry. This is telling us that based on the CCI edits table we cannot build these codes together using any modifier. Now if I were to remove this code and recheck everything turns up green. Now let's take a look at an example that includes modifiers. Our first entry looks good. Notice how our results are in different order than we entered them on the form? That is because we are presenting your results in reverse RView order for your convenience. The second entry does have some problems, however. You can see that based on the CPT guidelines, we need to use this code in conjunction with one of these others. Second, we find out there's a payment indicator conflict. And finally, we're given a warning telling us that this modifier is not commonly coded with this code. We can click this link here to get a list of common modifiers. This table shows you the total submissions to Medicare for a given modifier for this code, as well as the overall acceptance rate. We can take this a step farther by adding now an ICD-9 code. In this example, we are told that this diagnosis code is explicitly covered for this procedure code based on this national coverage determination policy. Again, clicking on this link takes you directly to CMS so that you can view the policy for yourself. We have the most robust research and code validation engine on the market designed specifically to make you more efficient and more accurate. We hope you've enjoyed the demo and remember, enjoy your job. Use Pitchstone Health.